I don't know. All right. Hello, guys. Um, uh, thank you for coming to my presentation today. Uh, hello, my name is Nathan McCulley. And throughout the semester, we've mostly been studying Greek mythology. Uh, Greek mythology in terms of origin, stories, and myths. But I decided to kind of uh, diverge from this a little bit by studying the Inuits. And the Inuits are a group of people, most or a Native American people, from uh, from northern Alaska, specifically the Aleutian Islands, and are found throughout northern Canada, as well as western Greenland. Now, uh, we will specifically focus on one person named Sedna. Sedna, in Inuit myth, is recognized as a very, uh, as a very beautiful woman with very, very long flowing hair. This will come into play later in my presentation. Um, why did I choose Sedna? This is because about nine months ago, I um, had suffered a lawnmower accident that took off three of my fingers. And it just so happens that during my research, Sedna from Inwood Myth has also suffered a, uh, had suffered a very similar traumatic experience, uh, traumatic injury to her hand. So this is my way of being able to connect with, uh, connect with Sedna in this regard. Now, uh, with all of that being said, ah, one more thing, uh, a couple more things. Uh, the Inuits are actually a tribal people. This means that we, uh, means that they hunt for food and shelter for their families, uh, or to provide for their families. Now, the this story can be very difficult to tell uh, because there are many characters. And so therefore, I have enlisted in the help of a few of my classmates. I would first up like to um, say, or invite Alicia, who is going to play the role of Sedna, main character in the story. Jonathan, who will be playing the role of Ohotuk, Sedna's father. And last but not least, I would like to invite Peter and Hong, who will be playing special, some special guests that will, that will be. Now, now, without further further ado, let's start the presentation, shall we? and I am the shaman for my tribe of Inuits, the, the equivalent to that of a priest. And today, we will be focusing on the Inuit story of Sedna, also known as the sea goddess. Now, our story starts one day with a tribe of Inuits. And among, or among them was a woman named Sedna. She came from a very wealthy family, as she had everything that she could ever want, as her father, Ootuk, was an excellent hunter. <laughs> Ooh. In addition to this, Sedna was also greeted by many a suitor who were looking to marry her throughout her life. Sedna, however, turned down every single suitor, <laughs> making her fa father very frustrated. And in his frustration, told her to marry his or to marry her dog. Hurry! <laughs> and in an act of defiance against her father, ran off with the dog, or did exactly that and ran off. <laughs> Even though she was on the island. She still depended on her father for food, and constantly sent her dog husband over to get food from her father whenever their food supplies it went too low. 
<laughs> but as time went on, Sadna's father became very suspicious of this activity and went in to and went to the island to investigate. <laughs> and upon his arrival, he was met by his, um, he met his, he saw his daughter, and it was appalled at how he could have done such a thing. And so when the dog wasn't looking, he snuck rocks into the dog's backpack he was using for food, and then traveled back home. Give me some food. And now, the next time he went for food, the dog had struggled under the little rocks and drowned. <laughs> Killing the dog. <laughs> now, with her husband with her husband dead, in a very sad state, Sidna had continued to be visited by many suitors looking to marry her. But all of them were turned down. Turned down again. Except one day. One day. A strange man arrived by, by means of Kaya, looking to Mary's. This represented a turning point in Sedna's life, as this was the first person whom she did not reject, as he looked handsome and so he said he was wealthy. And so she agreed, and they went off to their island. Or went off to the strange man's island. Now, now at the island, however, once they got to the island, the strange man got out of his kayak for the very first time, revealing himself to have legs that, that were small and spindly compared to his body size. But it wasn't until the, the strange man took off his goggles to reveal, or, and revealed himself to have eyes that lacked lids. This. It was at this moment Sidna realized that she was now married to a horrible bird, a trickster. <laughs> Sidna's father, Sidna's father, once again concerned for her daughter's safety and well-being, traveled to the island again, or traveled to the island. And when he got back to the and when he got to the island, he noticed that his daughter was very malnourished. She didn't have or all she could eat was fish, because that's all that the birdman could catch and provide for her. And knowing this, Sidna's father took her in his kayak and headed back home. But this isn't where the story ends. The birdman, noticing that his wife was missing, flew after the or flew after the kayak carrying Sedna and her father, along with all of his friends that also happened to be birds. And when they finally got to the kayak, he flapped his wings with such force that they created waves as large as mountains that would have capsized Sedna's father's boat. Would have capsized them both. Sedna's father, realizing this, threw his daughter out of the kayak in order to save himself. Wow. <laughs> this didn't stop Sedna, however. As she got back to the kayak, or she swam back to the kayak and held on, but was batted away by her father's kayak paddle. <laughs> back into the room she went. Sedna, Sedna still didn't stop, however as she swam back to the kayak a second time and grabbed a hold even longer. But she was met by her father with a knife who then chopped her fingers off at the joints. As all of this was happening, the sea gods were watching all of this and decided to take pity on Sedna. They couldn't reattach Sedna's fingers, but instead, from each of each of her, they turn Sedna's fingers into the very same mammals that we know today. Whales. Whales. <laughs> seals, and sea lions. And the like. All of the sea mammals are said to come from this. Sedna's fingers. And now, without set or without fingers, Sedna sank to the sea floor, where she now dwells as a goddess of the sea.
the Birdman, after noticing that his or realizing that his wife was seemingly killed, flew back to his island, where he now dwells in peace. Sedna's father, however, was not as lucky. He was very devastated with what he had done to his very own daughter. So much so, he wrapped himself in a bearskin cloak and threw himself into the waves, sacrificing himself. <laughs> and now, all three, Sedna, Sedna's father, Abel Tuk, and Sedna's dog, husband, all live on the sea floor together. Despite his misdeeds, he pleaded with Sedna and her dog husband for forgiveness and was and would later be forgiven for his crimes in life. <laughs> now, it is said in Inuit culture that all of the sea's mammals become trapped in Sedna's long flowing hair. And because of this, Sedna could not comb her hair to release animals. And because of such a lack of fingers, she couldn't release all the animals. And now, it is my job as a shaman to travel to the sea floor to comb the hair of Sedna to release them. Thank you. 